That's it. This booth, oh, this booth always kills me. Look at that. Look at that. I am at the Charleston Antique Mall in Las Vegas, which actually isn't on Charleston. It's actually on Decatur, if you live around here. Um, but right in the door here, I'm spotting a whole shelf full of Fenton blue opalescent hobnail. And I didn't even know it got made in a green. I thought that was interesting. It's all priced pretty spot on in this booth. It's not overpriced. It's just priced where it it would be for the collector. And I am perfectly okay with that. And I mean, I got to say, I'm kind of bummed when I spot some really pretty blue opalescent that I want and it's, you know, it's at retail and I cannot justify buying myself anything right now. I can want though kind of looking in the cases. This is a really nice piece of carnival, even though it's got grapes on it, which is pretty common. It, the colors were really nice. I'm looking at all the little, little old kitcheny stuff. I thought this baskety kind of pottery, it's not a basket. It's supposed to look like a basket, but it's, it's pottery. And it is made in Italy, as you can see. I'm not sure who the maker is. I couldn't see the price tag because I had my hand on it. It is $45. It's a neat piece. Okay, looking away from the blue opalescent glass. I'm just looking away. Oh, wait, what do I spot? More pretty blue glass. I was surrounded. Thought these little piggies were very cute and the little lop-eared bunny. I saw a little table full of seashells including an abalone and don't remember what that was priced at but it was actually it was priced really well. This is spongeware and I'm looking for the price because I see the cow and then all of a sudden I look up and I see that it's an entire set. It's the teapot and the cups and the plates and I can't see what that's priced there but it was priced again very well. And then I saw that fantastic Noah's Ark platter and I love it but it's a little too heavy for me to grab out of there and try to see what the marks are on the back and it was also $45. It's a really quality piece. I can tell that, but definitely don't want to ship that. And then here is a complete set of treasure craft canisters, which is very cool. I don't think I've ever seen like a complete set and they were selling the entire set, I want to say $78 was the price on that, which is, that's a really good deal too. Again, I don't want to ship platters and I don't want to ship canisters. Unless I can have somebody else package them up and there's enough profit in it to pay to do that. This was a fantastic piece. Look at that. Look at that solid brass little horse box thing. And then we have some poodles. This was a pastel. It was done very, very nicely. Hmm. Fake lettuce. You know I love the fake lettuce. You actually might have to have the fake lettuce. I just might. The fake lettuce. I'm digging. Oh, 
This one's only three. Look at that little fake lettuce. <sighs> oh. I do like. I do like. Do you like me some fake lettuce? What else do we have? Kind of like the corn, but I would need more than one ear. <gasps> oh, there's another lettuce. Okay, I think I'm gonna get the fake lettuce. I'll explain. I'll explain the fake lettuce. I promise. Okay, so I used to sell a lot of fake fruits and vegetables. And the more realistic and unusual the item is, the better it sells for. But the key is, you sell them as photography props. There you go. That's the key. Um, I'm probably going to keep these because of my tortoises and... My tortoise collection and arranging something around the lettuce because that's kind of a treat that we give them all the time. There we go. These little guys, I don't know anything about these except that they were awful cute. I did consider getting them, but in the end, I left them behind. And I spotted this ice cream scoop. And I know some of these old vintage ice cream scoops can bring some really good money. I just don't know enough about them to know if this was one. And uh, it was $18, which was probably a good price for that. Well, I like the little bird inside the bird cage. How much is he? Oh, I can't see. I can't reach it. Keep this in mind if you have space at an antique mall. Your items need to be accessible by your customers and they need to be able to get to the price tags because most buyers are kind of like I just did. If they can't figure out what the price is, they'll just leave it most of the time. Every once in a while I'll go and ask for a price, but usually I will just kind of go eh, and I will leave it. And I think that's just pretty common. These little horse salt and pepper shakers were super cute. I loved them. Just kind of looking around one more time, see if there's anything that I might have missed in here. Like a cool vintage panther, but he was a little too much. I'm also on the lookout for that fire and light glass. I'm on a quest. I'm going to find some in the wild. Funny thing is, I had some in my booth. I was pointing out that little Dumbo that was really super cute. Um, I had some in my own booth before I knew what it was. And of course, it's already sold because I sold it too cheap. So now I got to find some more. I did like that tortoise right there. I liked him. But I had to show a little self-discipline. I can't. I can't buy them all. I don't have enough room. On to another booth. And this little picture caught my eye. It is a signed piece. I don't know who it's signed by, so we would just have to call it Art Pottery. And I just want to say, if you spend a considerable, uh, blah, 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 considerable, that's a hard word, amount of time looking one piece of something up, I'm going to encourage you to stop doing that and start pricing based on what you have into it, how much you would like as a profit margin, and if you're really thinking something might be valuable, run it at auction starting at that price you were thinking you'd be happy with. Okay, I was pointing out those beautiful little blue cardinals, cardinals, blue jays. What is going on with my brain right now? <laughs> blue jays, they were blue jays. I had, a, I had a lady kind of jockeying me for position in this booth and she was really trying to avoid me and I was trying to avoid getting her on camera so that's why it was a little jerky right there. We finally made the pass. Of course, this is out for Halloween, but I don't know, Halloween. Oh, wait, I was gonna talk about Halloween dishes, but wait, <laughs> okay. Redemption time because I passed some of these up at the thrift store. Now, the ones I passed up were much smaller. 
Uh, these are like humongous and they are the Zooks, as you can see here. They only went at eleven fifty for this one. And eleven fifty for this one. And eleven fifty for this one. And then they had this big ginormous one for only sixteen dollars. And I thought, hmm, okay. That's got to be worth something. So I'm super excited. I got three of the, I don't even know, they were like 15 inch. And then I got that big, huge one, which was only $16. So I'm excited. Let's see what else we can find. Okay. And of course I see this. Please be priced good. Oh, 55. I can't pay it. This is Northwood. I'm trying to read it beads and something I don't think that's quite right but this is a nice piece look at the twigs yeah I wish I could spend that on myself right now but I can't I cannot I cannot spend that on myself and I saw I can get it for 20 bucks on eBay so yay I just love when I find like a, a big win right at the first part of my shopping trip. I mean, it's great to find, you know, the, the scores anytime, but finding them at the very beginning kind of gets, kind of gets you going, kind of gets your eyeballs like looking for more great stuff. So I'm just looking around the same booth for some more good deals. Had some really pretty fetish necklaces all the little animals carved out of stones and then there was this vanity set that is a jewelry casket and some perfume bottles and then there was this i believe this is murano pretty sure if you turn that over it's going to have a clear pontal with some weight to it it was a nice piece all right I'm looking in this booth at the Jadeite and it was like $145 for that piece. And I just don't even know anything about Jadeite. I have not followed Jadeite. I mean, I look for it. Don't get me wrong. I will. I'll pick it up if I find it, you know, for the right price. Um, but I really, that's not a type of thing that I pay up for because I just don't know enough about all the differences between the newer stuff and the older stuff and the different makers and the but hey niching in that could be really good if you if you learn that just never was an interest of mine this booth has a lot of vintage clothes and a lot of like you know 1950s feeling things like these spaghetti poodles some of the dolls and then this bee he's like he's a mischievous bee look at that face got a little mischievous face and he is hundred and forty dollars so we're not even gonna pick him up I don't touch everything I touch I touch a lot of stuff but I don't touch everything as I've been accused of doing okay this is the booth where I found my Eldrith horse last time and my um I can't even think of the name of them now. Uh, something, something pottery mugs. Gosh, I can't even think. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. I can see them. I can see them in my brain, but I can't say the word. Oh. See what other little hidden treasures I can find in here this time. These are interesting. Made in Japan. That's um, just interesting. It's a little on the crude side. It's a good price. $10? That's a good price. This one's $19.50 for this chuck. I like them. Starting to get away from the music. Oh, the day level was milking equipment. I used it every day for a long period of my life. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that fantastic fish tray. Christina Boyd. 
This is not a name I'm familiar with, but I like it. It's very good work. Pear. I think that says as is. I can't tell what that says. Hmm. Hmm. They have two different prices on them, so I don't think it really is the pear. I got a little quiet, so I decided to just make sure YouTube isn't picking up on some music in the background. And then I'm looking at this lamp here. They went $550 for this lamp, which is pretty spectacular, I must say. And it's the perfect type of item to put on Cherish.com, actually. I really like these shelves they had up here. It's giving me ideas. Hello, kitty. How much are you? Ooh, these shelves seem a little... <gasps> he's what? Oh, he's a Royal Copenhagen. Oh, his price tag is gone, though. And he's wet. Why is he dripping water? I don't know why he's dripping water. Ooh, cameras. Not my thing. At all. I have no interest in cameras. Hmm, cute little old bottles. How much are these? Maybe I can get some of these for my daughter. $6.95. They're the old Watkins. I actually sold Watkins back in the 80s. I've done a little bit of everything in my life. Okay, no great steals in this one, but look at those. Look at those mushrooms. What? They are Freeman McFarlane. I have talked about those. $230. Are those amazing? Or what? Here, let me get over to this side so you can see. Look at, oh look from this side. Ooh, look at this. Those are, those are amazing. What is this? There's like this whole little scene of the crucifixion going on inside this bottle for $59. That is, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. That's cool. Wow. I always see really cool stuff over in this booth, like right off the bat. A tortoise. Of course I find a tortoise. And it's only twelve fifty. Oh, how do I say no to him? I can't say no to him. I can't do it. But now I have no hands. That's the problem. Is it this booth? Oh, this booth always kills me. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, what does that say on it? It says, whatever that says in French. $85. That does not seem like a bad price for that. Ah. Oh. Let's see the bottom. Oh, it's Fitz and Floyd. Toulouse. Oh, man, look at that. That is spectacular. Oh, okay can only drool for ever so long. And I'm like looking at these little bighorn sheep bookends. They are $35. Do have to have the tours. Okay, what would that have been for? What would have, what would, what was this part for? I mean, I know it's a candle holder, but what's, what's that? I do not know. Oh. Thirty-nine. That's a very good price for that. Really nice piece of Murano. See, I haven't even gotten in the booth, and I'm going a little crazy over their stuff. Twenty-four dollars for those guys. Probably just a made in Japan vintage, but they're cool.
Ooh, look at that lamp. That's, that's cool. It's got little inlay turquoise. Oh, hi birdie, what are you? He's a smoker. Love it. It's a little old, a little new in here, and repurposed. Look at this. Is this McCoy? I'll show you if you're McCoy. Doesn't, it's not marked. They are calling it. Uh, they're not calling it one either. 1850. Really like that with the dog. I don't know. You guys tell me what that is. I like it. Just like I like. Look at this. Oh, look at her. That's cool. That chicken planter is so 60s, it's ridiculous. Loved it. I do love this booth. This is one of my favorite booths in the entire mall. I can also tell you that when the people who own this booth, the, the own the things in this booth are there, they will wheel and deal. So um, sometimes it, it pays to ask because especially at this mall, the dealers are encouraged to work in their spaces. And if they're there, you know what? What's the worst that can happen? Is they say no or they negotiate a different price? Just like we do on eBay, you know, somebody makes an offer and we counter or we accept it. These dealers at the antique malls are no different than that. They want to sell this stuff as long as they're making a profit. I see you, I see you, Tortoise, and you're not coming with me because you're too big. Yes, and by that I mean I just don't have space to put any big tortoises right now. I have space for little ones, but not for big ones. As much as I like that piece. Self-discipline can be just so hard sometimes. These were interesting little candle holders. And then I spot this. This looks like it would glow like crazy. Um, it is a piece of Murano, and I don't think I've ever seen a piece of Murano with that bright kind of uranium glass color, or it's not really Vaseline. It's, um, I don't even know what you call that color. It was spectacular, though. Like I said, there's so many. These people have such a good eye for finding things to put in their booth. I got to tell you, my kind of people. Okay, I got my hand free again. Look at this set. Wowza. I'm not sure I have ever seen this pattern. It is. Oh, it's a Franciscan. Huh. That's kind of a sweet pattern with the mushrooms on it. They have them all priced individually. And then here is the apple. Oh, there's a, another piece. I'm not a big fan of brass in general. I generally, I'll pick it up if it's cheap enough, but... Oh, it's going on with you, little... Look, his little head moves. Look at that. He has to stay, though. This is... That's quite interesting. I see you too. You can stay. <gasps> oh, you're really cute. He's a bank. Oh, he's got some damage. And he's $25. He can stay. Okay. A little seahorse. You are ironwood. And you are $22. What you want to look for in ironwood sculptures is size. You want to look for big pieces of ironwood because they can no longer cut the trees. So they can only use the branches that fall on the ground. 
So that's why you see a lot of the smaller ironwood pieces and not a lot of big ironwood pieces. So those big ones, they are worth some money. And, and he's, he's just adorable. Love him. Love him so much. <laughs> I'm so glad I got over my, my aversion to owls. Because I see a lot of really cute ones now. For those that don't know, my aversion to owls had to do with my evil aunt. And yes, she is pure evil. She collected owls. I always associated owls with her. And it was the crazy lamp lady. Jocelyn got me over that aversion of owls and helped me into putting owls in a better light. And now I think about my friend, the crazy lamp lady, when I think of owls. So there, we're good on owls now. I like that little piece, as you can tell. I had to zoom on it twice. Where'd it go? It's got a lot of plush, a lot of Christmas. Nothing's drawing me in there. This is drawing me in. We got a little mishmash. I like mishmash. That's interesting. Look, somebody made a flower out of all the I love this idea of repurposing, you know, just the singleton plates and dishes. I think that's a great idea. I don't have the patience for it, but I think it's a great idea for those of you. Those of you who do, these are $88. These are very nice. Very nice. Oh, wow, almost missed that. He was standing there. Right there. Wow, you are pretty magnificent. I wish I had like a mantle big enough to put you on. Not that I could buy you, but look at that. Pretty stunning. Oh, how cute are you guys? Oh, Henriksen. Okay, I've sold some Henriksen imports. They make some cute stuff. What was the price on that? I don't see a price on that. Where's your price? $78 for the whole set. That's not, that's not bad for a whole set. Henriksen is not a high-end brand, but I have sold pieces in the $15 to $20 range, and so yeah, that was that was a good that was a good buy. That was a good buy for someone. Ooh, I don't even know if I can squeeze through here. This is pretty tight. I'm a little scared. But there's glass, and I'm really, really determined to find some fire and light. I'm determined. I learned about the fire and light glass from my friend Yvonne at Yvonne Thrifty Rich channel. So if you want to learn about that, go check out her videos. She talks a lot about it and shows you some examples. I was kind of drawn to this piece, but when I picked it up, I could really tell it was one of those, just kind of a, a Chinese glass import. And then I was drawn to this piece, and I was trying to figure out if it had a signature, because a signature would have been really good. Now, it did have a UPC code, which kind of, that, that bothered me a little bit. But uh, not enough to deter me from looking a little closer, because it was only $10. And I'm looking and looking. I'm trying to read that little label under there. And what I found out is it says Dynasty, which can sell okay. And I probably could have doubled my money on that, but that wasn't enough profit to motivate me. And then I squeezed back out of this booth. That was a little scary, though. I, I have to tell you, that was, that was skinny even for me. <laughs> Love these little angel wings that someone made. And they were priced very reasonably. There was lots of cute little handmade things in here. The little snowmen were very, very cute. I'm just not ready to think about Christmas yet. I'm really not, even though I know it's gonna be here. Like it's, this year is just blazing by. So you know what? It's gonna be here like, well, in a few months. <laughs> oh, 
remember that. Oh, to be back living like that again. This is row pottery. We have a pretty little lacquer dish. This is a very, very primitive feeling booth. I don't know, did this thing zoom in on me? Nope, we're good. They've just got a lot of like the old rusty tools and stuff. I had a house once that had a room where I decorated that way. Everything was like the old rusty tools and stuff. Was cool. Gotta have the right house for it though. Like, oh, how they put the luggage up there? That's pretty cool too. Okay, I'm sorry. I gotta cut it off here. There will be a part two coming very soon. But for now, go be profitable and make it fun. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Bye.